broadcasting from our studio in Ocala, Florida. I'm Brody Barcode. I'm Ryan James. And welcome, welcome to, to The, the Parlor. Parlor, your hub for independent art and entertainment, as well as a platform to showcase independent artists and entertainers abroad. Mmm, now that's gourmet. That it is, sir. Hanging out with us tonight in the parlor is the incredibly talented independent artist as well as actor and filmmaker, Mr. Harley Wallen. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for having me on, Brody. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much again for hanging out with us tonight. Um, how's things been in, in your neck of the woods? You know what? Uh, you know, it's been obviously everybody, everybody can say it's been a crazy year and a half of of living pretty much upside down, but you know, wild enough during this time, we shot a, an entire TV series and an entire feature film that we wrapped this summer. So we have, uh, we stayed productive and uh, you gotta get creative, but you, you know, oh, yeah. you gotta keep living. Now, how do you, how do you uh, combat some of the, uh, some of the mandates and, and laws for, for social distancing and stuff? That was tricky. Uh, it was very tricky on the uh, on the TV series Tale of Tales. We shot that last year, and um, we had shot I think six weeks um, when the whole shutdowns and the craziness started. Mm. And then we were they opened back up again, and I think we could be twenty people or twenty five people in a building. And I was like, yeah, no, I think we can get away with that uh, with extras and, and 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 everything else. I think we can make that happen. Um, so we set up our, our stuff and, 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 and started filming again in late June, early July. Some creative uh, but it, but shots. It was tricky. Yeah, it was very tricky because, you know, especially if you watch the show, there are scenes where it's very obviously a lot more than 20 people because we're it's, it's in a strip club. But right. what you do is you shoot segments and parts of it and you have you have to be creative to get the, to feel like there's that many people in there. Um, right. Sometimes mixing and matching days, um, shooting one side and the other side on a different day. Uh, so yeah, we, we have to get very creative uh, just to get through that. And, but we got lucky. We went through uh, uh, without anybody catching anything on set and, uh, and ma we made it through That's and then awesome. we just yeah. did it again. Yeah. Thanks. Man. That's a huge blessing. I, I was, I was just going to ask, um, as far as uh, per episode, uh, what was the timeline like uh, knocking out and, you know, as far as knocking out a complete episode to get ready to get to that next to ne next shoot? Yeah, so we aimed at 20 pages per episode. We saw um, uh, Cobra Kai, we saw Shit's Creek, and they have that 20 minute episode and it just seems to really work. Um, and, and myself being, you know, a, a dad amongst a filmmaker and an actor, I know how it is. You, you, you put the kids to bed at night and mm -hmm. by the time you sit down on the couch, it's close to 10 o'clock. And, and now you're like, you know, I got to get up and get the kids ready for school tomorrow. Yep. So you can't sit up all night. So some of these shows that have, you know, an hour episodes, uh, aren't always realistic. Uh, so, so right. we thought the 20 minute episode was a good idea. Um, the catch with it is uh, the people that love to binge, which a lot of the people that watched our show did, uh, they watched it all in one night. It's you oh, know, three wow. and a half yeah. hours, three nice. and a half hours for them. And they just sat up all night and uh, our inbox, you know, was full the next day of people saying, when is season two coming? And I'm like, oh, my God, like we just we just wrapped season one. <laughs> On the on the filming, when you were mentioning about extras and being stitched together, did you use a specific software? Because I was watching uh, a video on YouTube and how they kind of duplicate and shooting segments or blocks of mm -hmm. extras together. And then they use software to digitally. Uh, Add, yeah, Matt and and and, du and duplicate it to where it's all massive, mm -hmm. like. Let's say, for example, at the end of uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, you know, that yeah. entire stadium's full yeah. of people. And that a lot of that is digital software after yeah. shooting grandstands of groups of actors yeah. or extras. Yeah, no, we, we didn't have to do any of that because uh, uh, obviously sets a lot smaller. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, it's a blue collar strip club. So what we did was we shot. So if two people had a, a, a scene with dialogue uh, and both of them were kind of in the midst of a lot of stuff going on, we would shoot one side over the shoulder this way on say Tuesday. And then we would come back on, on Wednesday, shoot the other side. So now there we can have 25 people back there and 25 people back there. Makes because sense. It's two different days. And since so it's, it's our, darker so in the background too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this way you really couldn't tell what extras were in the background right. because it was darker back on the other side and the other yeah. side was lit. But it gives okay. it gives that stacking effect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. that's awesome. That's really cool. Very yeah. cool. You gotta just get creative with that, especially when you're trying to to showcase uh, you know, a, a lot of people in, in a club. Right. Well, and now as far as like any kind of uh, uh, COVID protocols with with bringing a crew into, let's say, the, the size of that that establishment, that that strip club establishment, um, were, were you limited to X amount of people to, to bring in? Yeah. Like it was yeah. like, OK, once we reach, reach this number. I mean, yeah. was, was that once again having to kind of go outside of the box as far as that creative thinking to get those shots you were needing working with yeah. your crew? For the TV series, especially because SAG hadn't really figured everything out yet. Right. So they had some guidelines, but not everything. So, so we kind of um, decided ourselves what safety measures make sense. Uh, uh, you know, talking about, you know, whether it was social distancing or masking or, or obviously, uh, you know, how many people could be inside at, at one time. Uh, so we did all of those things. Uh, what was better, obviously, this summer when we shot the vampire movie was um, SAG had everything in place. They had an exact protocol, so we didn't have to figure out a whole lot. The only thing that we did that that SAG, SAG didn't mandate was um, was instead of everybody going to crafty by themselves and grabbing what they want, touching everything, we had a, a designated PA that was getting everybody what they needed. So uh, you never had oh, to go cool. touch this stuff. So they, it was always brought to you. You just tell them what you want. That's oh, awesome. that's cool. And yeah. uh, I can imagine that with like some of the creative shots of of all the extras, you hired the same, you just kept the same extras throughout the entire run. And it was probably more cost effective too for the episodes. Well, yeah. So we probably had in total about 110, 120 extras hmm. for the whole thing. Uh, and the people that were generally extras for, for the biker stuff, the, they were separate. The strip clubs were separate. So, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, we, we totaled probably 120 extras on the series, wow. which was a lot, especially for a, for a smaller indie production. Right. Uh, but, but people were so excited. I think, you know, Michigan is a funny place because we used to have incentives. And we were at, the, at, at one point kind of duking it out with Atlanta. Uh, for who was going to be the next uh, film metropolis and then uh, a change in the politics and and they cut the film incentives and all the studios sold out all kinds of stuff here but we had we have so many people that are here and and uh, and that are very much into the arts and the crafts and and when that stuff disappeared some people went out and moved to atlanta and whatnot but right. but it's not realistic for everybody so mm -hmm. for those who stayed they're they're craving something and uh, we're able to to kind of provide that so so we're pretty lucky in the fact that we can get a lot of people to show up just because of how excited they are to be a part of something that's actually right. going to go somewhere and you're getting you i mean i know you go through the audition processes and stuff but you're yeah. i mean it's one of those these people really want to work well yeah i can give you extra work here mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. take it or leave it and most people will take it and yeah. they'll get a credit and stuff like that stuff for the resume. And when it winds up being a benefit, I would say uh, on your side, I mean, one being an independent filmmaker on that aspect yeah, and trying to put something together and still give people that sense of belonging and yeah. moving forward in their craft as well. Yeah. And, 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 and absolutely. I think it's one of them things that you find yourself you know, if you're looking at the, the different layers of indie, um, you know, somebody who is maybe in short films, just starting getting a few lines, right. they'll come on our set and be an extra. 
uh, and then somebody that's uh, you know a, a lead in uh, in our films will go and play you know in a big studio film they'll be a supporting role and they're a lead in ours so that's that's always there's always going to be all these different levels oh yeah uh, for everybody wherever you are on your journey there's always a spot for you and i think that's that's what's so awesome about it that's very cool now as far as um you had mentioned with the the movie that you had just recently finished were you yeah. um basically kind of seesawing and coordinating between those two or were you already finished with uh tale of tales and then you were able to bridge over to shooting your your feature uh so by the time we started shooting the the vampire feature we were done with tales tales uh was a to be exclusive uh june i think 20th or something like that and uh, and uh, we started shooting like right that that same week uh, that Tubi was uh, was releasing us, which was a little bit of a challenge because to promote and everything else and and the film schedule, people people know that you know twelve hour days is like the expectation, and right. when you go over, you go over. So yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, you don't go home till the till the job is done. So right, uh, and we shot a pretty aggressive schedule for this vampire movie because. Um, we had so many people in from Hollywood. Uh, I had uh, I had uh, Sean Whalen from uh, 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 the people under the stairs. I reunited him for the first time ever with Jan Birch, the stairmaster from the people under the stairs. <laughs> That's <laughs> cool. First, first time since that movie they worked together on this one. That is and so then, cool. Uh, and then Maria Olsen uh, uh, came in as well, and they were just absolutely amazing. But uh, because they were in and they were all leads they were in for virtually the entire shoot. So they cost a lot of money. So you can't really have them sitting around. No, so right, we, no. we shot 18 out of 20 days, um, which made it pretty rough because, you know, just, just running them back and forth to the airport and, 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 uh, and everything else that goes with it uh, was, was a big juggle without a doubt. And then right. uh, because it's a vampire movie and a, a, and a bit of a creature movie, there was all the makeup and the masks and, 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 and all that stuff too. So, uh, so that takes extra time uh, and time away from shooting. So we have to be really creative when we develop the schedule for that. Right. And what's the name of the movie or can you not say yet? Yeah, it's called beneath us all. And, uh, uh, but we're just editing. I, I won't even have a rough cut till the middle of October. Oh, uh, very so cool. that one is, okay. that one's going to take a while. We won't have a finished film till, late this year early next year uh gotcha. so it take, takes takes a lot of time to get through post uh um, oh, yeah. but we have ash and bone is the one that um we are we are right now down to the two final offers and uh and i think we I think we might have picked uh, our distributor today but uh but i i'm i'm uh, i'm not sure if if uh, until the until the ink is dry <laughs> so i don't want to i don't want to jinx it but uh I think that film has done so well with the festivals here right out of the gate. Um, and anybody who's uh, into, I don't know what kind of movies you like, but um, the, uh, you know, the Hills Have Eyes, mm -hmm. uh, House of Wax, uh, yeah. uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's that style of horror. So it's okay. kind of slasher-ish, but it's more like these crazy, uh, you know, uh, uh, hillbillies <laughs> that just go bonkers and uh and i got such amazing performances i just i knew we had something special with it but uh we so we we sent it out to festivals and um uh, we got back you know last week we're like fright night yeah you've been accepted your official selection you're a screening finalist and then we get the message atlanta horror you're a screening finalist you're wow and then we just got the notification a couple of days ago uh, in Austria, they have a, a giant horror festival, also a Fright Night uh, festival that we just, just got accepted for as well. So, so that one is coming hot out of the gates. So that's I think that's awesome. where we ended up with that good offers. Cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, how does your family feel with all the, uh, the shooting schedules? Since you've met, well, since, since we talked a little <laughs> bit on that prior to the interview, yeah. I mean, and I can understand it's difficult for a family in general. I mean, right now with the movie that I'm in, 
uh, it, it's it's a tough schedule because I mean we're weekend warriors with it, but yeah. still, all right, because we've all got full time jobs and all yeah. that. It it still takes a hard time on the oh, wife yeah. and the kids. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess my blessing is, you know, I'm, I'm, my wife, her, my wife's sister has five Emmys. So she came uh, into this meeting me knowing the industry fairly well. Um, and she starred and helped her sister in a bunch of stuff uh, before she moved to LA. So she was kind of already involved, although she was kind of on hiatus and, uh, and uh, you know, taking easy money doing her modeling gigs instead. Um, but but she jumped right back in with me when I decided to start, uh, you know, making films. So she's been my my partner in crime ever since. Um, and what's really cool is, yeah, and 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 even our girls, um, they love acting. So so they see us read lines and audition and do all this stuff, and they're always so curious about it. So we've been working with them whenever they feel like it. So they actually had. Um, my oldest, my eight-year-old had her first role at four. She was Tara Reed's daughter in our movie Bennett's Song. Um, oh, wow. So, so she, that is she, cool. she jumped right in. Uh, and both of them are in the TV series and both of them are in the vampire movie. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very so cool. It's quite the family affair. <clears throat> yeah. I, I mean, well, my kids, they they're interested in some of the stuff that uh, that i can show them um but uh also I, I do some lighting design and i do stage theater here in ocala as well and i get contracted by the local college yeah. and ever so often i'll bring them in it's like okay hey why don't we go up to the catwalk so you can see it's like holy crap it's really high up here it's like yeah, yeah. well try doing this by yourself for five or six hours lifting source fours and stuff like that yeah. they 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 love seeing the progress of my product because i i shoot from the hip i am terrible on design i can't put it down on paper to save my life really but i could i i like uh like with indie horror or indie film or anybody yeah. in general i like having the one-on-one -on -one collaboration to build start off with a seed and watch it grow into something massive yeah I think that's what I love too is being a part all the way from the writing and concept to see it you know like we've had a couple of premieres at the Chinese theater in, in Hollywood nice. so, so you know you go the uh, uh, eternal code which we released a few years ago but eternal code we had a premiere at the Chinese theater and uh, the the people at the Chinese theater came out and and they saw joe my manager and, and publicist and they were like what was the name of this movie again you know and and, and who are these because they, they were like like literally this is a big premiere for an indie film and uh, and then it was coined by i think hollywood times the night of a hundred stars or something because we had so much star power that night and it was wild just to be a part of that uh it's definitely energizing it's crazy because it started with me reading um, on Facebook. It was there was an ad about an Italian doctor who was decapitating a guy that was paraplegic um, with a fully functioning head to put it onto a brain dead body and, oh. and essentially swap out the parts that work and the parts that don't. And he had already done it on a primate, and and uh, and it was a deceased primate just to see if they could essentially get stuff to start regrowing. And they did. And I thought to myself, isn't it wild that we actually live in a world where the Holy <laughs> Grail is a real conversation? Yeah. Isn't that nuts? That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you got movies like The Sixth Day. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, Gattaca. Yeah, I love Gattaca. Gattaca. Um, and it really messes with a little bit of the psyche and you start thinking about the times yeah and it becomes a little bit of a mind warp it is it totally is and the question is how far away are we right you know what uh, i mean right because 
everything right now is moving on warp speed when it comes to science. If you think about what we thought was true 20 years ago, we, we looked really stupid 20 years ago. So think about, you know, 100 years ago, we knew nothing. I was going to ask because I actually watched Eternal Code last night. Oh, and uh, yeah. Cool. And finishing it up and especially and, and I'm not going to throw out any spoilers, okay. but finishing it up, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if Harley is considering coming back to this movie to maybe you know, go even further with it, whether that be a, a part two or, yes. or, or, you know, just, okay. You, you've, you've got tale of tales. I mean, is it possible that there could be a series based on the, the concept of uh, eternal code? Yeah. I mean, it's possible. I, I don't know if a series is the, is the right thing for eternal code, but I do think, um, I do, but and you you know how it ends, so oh, you know yeah, it's, yeah. it's not over. <laughs> no, uh, no, like I said, I, to, I, I didn't. To, yeah, to, I'm, I'm not gonna ahead, say. But, uh, uh, we'll just leave it at that. So that <laughs> way, because yeah. I'm I'm the type of guy I don't want to spoil anything for anybody out there. I try to be Mr. Nice Guy. So I try my yeah. best, but I am not, I am not always good at it. It's like I, this this one point, just, just one, but yeah. it winds up work. I wind up like I'm sorry, guys. I just spoiled something for you. But if you ever get a yeah. chance to see it, you'll you'll know what I mean. And that was the review. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible about going on my tangents so yeah uh, yeah but yeah, uh, yeah I, mean, I, would... I mean looking at it in the full scope and, and especially for what you were just now talking about I was like thinking about I was like damn that that he could really blow this out you know like in a really yeah. cool way there's a lot to it for sure uh, and, and when you start thinking about where we are I think I think that movie if I had the budget to add a little bit more sci-fi to it, so to speak, I, I, I would have liked to have had that. So I think if I'm gonna do a, a, a sequel or whatever that means, uh, I would like to do that with a little bit more money because I think um, it, it's such a big story with so many characters that it's easy to get lost in it. Right. Um, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I used to do all of my movies up until uh, this Ash and Bone are all kind of slow burns because that's that's the movies I grew up with. The, the, the thrillers of the 90s and the horror films of the early 2000s especially made a big imprint on me in the 80s horror as well uh, with uh, yes. you know, some of those culture guys and everything like I love all that stuff. So. I try to, to, to kind of tip my cap to whatever uh, genre. So with Eternal Code, um, it landed kind of in between genres, so to speak. It, it has a sci-fi feel, but it's not a sci-fi <clears throat> movie. Right. Uh, it's probably more of a crime uh, drama about yeah. corruption and whatever else than well, what yeah. it is sci-fi. And that's what I noticed too in the way that oh sorry, no, 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 you're fine. I was gonna say that's that's what I noticed too in the way that you shot it. You, you you definitely kept it more on the the crime thriller aspect, and yet we knew there was this whole world of yeah. sci-fi. Cause I mean, what they were talking about and 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 just the little things that you're touching on, I was like, my God, this this could be a whole nother, yeah. you know, uh just just stadium in itself but yeah. um but yeah I, I completely agree you know that that's 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 what i was gathering from it that slow yeah. burn crime thriller aspect yeah and this is actually why i love writing through a writer now so much more because i, I have brett miller who's who's my writer who wrote ash and bone he wrote beneath us all and he's uh, right now working on a new script for me that we're shooting this winter um but he's so fantastic at at taking my story and and just making it bigger, better uh, all around. Um, I don't because because of the fact that the today's audience don't always love a slow burn. They're like, all right, let's get to it, damn it! And and and, yeah. and I and I like to to pe people always say it's a little slow at the start, but then they love the whatever. And yeah. I'm like. The reason why you'd love it later on is because the characters are developed. You've gotten to know them. You care about them. That that's that that's how you set it up. 
but I understand now that you have to, um, you know, with, with, with all the streaming services and whatnot, if you turn on a movie, if, if five, 10 minutes in, you, I don't have you, it's so easy to just go to the next thing. So, uh, so uh, you can't quite do what you used to do, which is, uh, which is a little sad because that whole developing of characters uh, can get a little missed in the shuffle and, and we can get to the actions a little too fast. In, in my opinion, I think about like um, <clears throat> some of my favorite movies of all time, The Usual Suspect, Heat, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, oh, yeah. uh, Spanish Prisoner, like they, they all simmer before they mm-hmm. really yeah. start smoking. Yeah. Uh, it's funny too you mentioned heat because i just watched that uh, about a month or two oh, ago so and, and i mean i uh, jesus i remember like the first time watching it and you're absolutely when when it breaks and and everything just hits the fan it's like it, it's, on. Oh, it's on fire uh yeah i mean yeah so i mean, I, I, remember I understand watching that the... movie and then uh, i i wrote uh abstruse uh, it was originally called Into a Dark Mind. And I remember I have a friend of mine who's a filmmaker and a director, and, and I, we like bouncing stuff off each other. So I sent him the script, and he goes, ooh, man, who, who's, who are you going to have play Max? And I'm like, I don't know. And he goes, that's a tough role. He's like, that's a, that's a hard anti-hero. You got to be able to l- kind of l- do the love-hate thing. And, and he's like, the only people that, I, that have been really amazing at that is like, you know, Mickey Rourke and Tom Sizemore. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to get them, you know. And then I said, to hell with this. So I, so I, I sent the, uh, the script to uh, the Facebook for, for Tom Sizemore and his handlers. Like, I, I was bored. I read the script. It's really good. I'm showing it to Tom. And I was like, are you kidding me? So, so <laughs> then Tom gets the script, loves the story. And we haven't even gotten to the fact that I don't have a budget at all <laughs> to even talk to this guy. So I had to like finagle and go back to a couple of investors just to give him an awful offer. And because he loved the script so much, he ended up coming in playing the lead in it. But literally that blew my mind. But imagine watching Heat and having yeah, one here's of your the, favorite movies. Yeah, and here's the guy directing that- him. Yeah, here's here's the guy that just went mano a mano with Al Pacino, you know. Oh, God. <laughs> and, I remember and one of my scene. favorite all time, you know, Michael Mann films. So yeah, I, absolutely <laughs> amazing. That's awesome. Love it. Yeah, Michael Mann is a big uh, big impression on me. Gr- yeah. Great director. Yeah. So, how did you get into the acting and and the filmmaking? So I've always been a creative, but it's been in, in so many different ways. Um, so when I, was, when I was younger, I started martial arts when I was seven. Um, I got on the national team at 13, 14. Um, mm. And then I started break dancing right around that age. Uh, and I ended up doing uh, uh, an independent film against the... Uh, against the, you know, against violence, because I think we got into some fights and we had to, to be a part of that as, right. a little, uh, <laughs> as a little uh, social experiment to say, hey, don't do this stuff. Public uh, service announcement. Then, <laughs> right? And then we got, uh, we got cast on, uh, on, a, on a, it was like a cabaret show. It's a cult show, big, big TV show in Sweden. Uh, because we were dancers, they had uh, musical guests every week. And it was, uh, it's called Sul Stolama. And the show was, you know, a, a syndicated big TV show. Um, and uh, we were supposed to be kind of dancers for the musical guests oh, to okay. transition the musical act to the, to the show. And uh, when they had one-liners and stuff, they would come over and ask, instead of hiring another actor and add payroll, we were already there. So they right. could just bump us up and and pay us instead so uh, i that's what i did i started doing little uh one-liners two-liners and uh and when you get bumped up you start hanging out with the actors and when you start hanging out with the actors you realize that acting is is way more than what you ever thought it was and it's fascinating and i started like learning about the different methods and the different teachers and everything and I was like, wow, I got to get into this. So I, I ended up going, getting myself an acting coach, uh, 
doing acting classes and all that jazz to kind of like uh, figure out how to how to be able to to deliver on screen and and uh, I, you're, I was hooked. I, I love it. It's I learned so much about myself playing other characters. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Do you feel like uh, after doing a role or whatnot, you still you you embody a little bit of that whenever you're done? Or I I actually think that pretty. I mean, not not every role is in you. But I do think almost every role is in you, and you just allow that piece to bloom. You may you may have suppressed that part of you, and, and, and it, it's something that you don't act out on. But it's, it's right. a little piece inside of you, and it's nice to become aware uh, of the, of all the pieces of you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I found that uh, that that it's a uh, um, you know not every role is is great for you, and not every role you learn something. But, but often I've learned stuff about me because I compare myself and my decision-making to theirs. And, right. uh, and, and it's usually pretty fascinating. And then you look at the motivations and what they're after and what I'm after because all that scene study stuff is so so big. Like when you sit down with a script, where am I coming from? Where am I going? Who am I? And how do I feel about the people in front of me? That, right. that it's, I mean, it's, it's so basic, but it's so incredible. And then when, when you, you stop analyze, and think about it, it it's one of those things yeah. that actually makes it the most difficult thing out of the entire thing. Memorizing lines, that could be a little difficult, could be depending on how the dialogue is. Yeah. Uh, because you have your easiest own speaking part, pattern. The, the line's the easiest part, without a doubt. It's uh, living as the character. That's, that's where, you, if you didn't do your homework, if you didn't transition into them uh then then it don't work uh and i've seen people that that bring the character to them and i've seen the people that step out of themselves into the character and uh and whatever method and however you get there i I, i'm not i don't dictate which way which route to go i'm a a sanford meissner guy myself uh and uh, and that's my route but i but i love acting and i love process i love talking I could geek out on talking acting all day. Uh, nobody would want to listen to it other than other geeks like me. <laughs> I, I mean, I there there's still some things for myself whenever I'm in a role. I mean, I I get the basic gist of it. I all I, I treat it also as a collaboration with the director. Yeah. I mean, what do you see? Okay, well, how do you think about this? And just kind of bounce it back and forth. I like it. Yes. Do it. Yeah. And uh, because a, a lot of people, I think, have a, a, the biggest mindset that is, OK, you are the director. I am the actor. You tell me what to do. That's it. And we oh. don't always get to see the the collaboration with some of these actors, with the directors and trying to figure out you hear about it sometimes like Gene Wilder. He was big on yeah. doing that, especially like Willy Wonka. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> uh, Robert Downey Jr. with Guy Ritchie on Sherlock oh, Holmes. Yeah, I mean that was a big deal. Watching some of the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, it was incredible oh, yeah. to know. Him in general does that with all his roles. That's I mean, cool. He really likes to dig in. Yeah, I, I, I love digging <laughs> in too. I mean, it's a lot of fun. But ultimately, you're gonna have a director and. Some of them will make the script handcuffs. Some of them will make it a guide rail. Um, mm-hmm. it, it just it just depends on the director. I prefer the guide rail and, and yeah. I prefer uh, collaboration because if you're just going to have me do what you want, then I'm a little bit of a robot uh, and I'm not really contributing. Um, I love doing, you know, I asked for all the information they have. So beyond the script, do you have do you have a breakdown of my character so i would love to really dig into right. that uh, yeah. and some some have a lot of it some have a little of it uh and then you go back to the director again and you compare notes again uh but 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 collaborative directors are are the best in my opinion i agree I mean, because there one there's a bigger bond for the bigger goal and the bigger bigger product this way I mean, you learn more about yourself and how you interact with 
other authority figures within a production. Yeah. Um, as well as having that little buddy, so to speak, is a, Hey, did you think about this? Holy crap. No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, you was like, well, I see what you did there. Why don't we go ahead and try that? But try yeah. this out for me too. You got two takes since everything's digital nowadays, it makes life so much easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, they can say, you know what? I really didn't care for that. I like what you did on this, this little bit, but I think we can do with all of this part instead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's all there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think uh, for me, what, what I like to do is I like to make sure that I have what I need as a director Mm -hmm. uh, and then every now and then we shoot something and I just feel that there's more there's something there that we haven't gotten to and I'll talk to the to the actors and, and, and kind of tell them that I feel that there's something here that hasn't been said hasn't been done right and, and, and I'd like to see it so I have now everything that I need for this scene but I would like to see what what happens if I if I just uncuff you and you just allow it to happen right. so don't try to mimic anything you've already done don't try to go backwards just allow this to hit you as if it was all the first time all over again mm. and then and then just take it and go with it yeah it gives them a chance to, to to breathe and and have a little bit of fun with it even if it's an angry yeah. moment uh, yeah that's well, a cool and, that's a cool thing and like you said taking the cuffs off um, and, and not being confined to, all right, we're going to try and nail this in just this one or two or three takes. Let's, you know, let's run with this and we'll get it. And yeah. there's the product. And, yeah. And, and I'd say probably a third of the time it's better than I expected. A third of the time it's probably either which way. And a third of the time it didn't work out at all. Right. But it's still worth it. Because yeah. like you said, it's all digital. An extra take is an extra X amount, you know, 90 seconds or whatever. Yeah. Right. It's, yeah. It's not right. that big of a deal. It's not like you're, yeah, eating up actual film. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. Which that's, that was a whole nother world right there. Now, oh, yeah. as you, you said that you feel like a part of a role is still part, like a little bit ingrained. Mm -hmm. Now, do you take some of those characters home with you? I, I, I generally don't. There's been a couple of them where I think I, I felt like, uh, like with Tale of Tales, because of how long the production was to shoot eight episodes of a TV series, um, I think that there are pieces that stuck from Nick a little bit with me. Um, and, 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 and what I liked about Nick was that he doesn't care so much about opinions of others he's really that guy who who who's the lion and sees everybody else as the lamb and uh. i i don't but i think it's sometimes healthy to have a little bit of that because yeah. if you care too much about other people's opinions and thoughts and feelings too much it can hinder yourself absolutely so, Absolutely. So you gotta have a balance between between how much because i'm a, i feel like i'm a natural giver so it's very easy for me to just hand over and hand over and hand over and playing Nick. He doesn't, he doesn't give anything. He only gives what he has to, but he very happy taking something. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that was good for me to play because it's a reminder sometimes that you just can't continue just walking over and just giving and giving and giving because it's not always the right thing to do. A lot of people right. take advantage of you. Oh yeah, Absolutely. I, I've been there and there are moments that I feel like with certain with certain projects I've been a part of over the past year or so. Mm. Uh, yeah, I feel like I've been taken advantage of. Yeah, I mean, it's just that's just nature of the beast. Yes, yeah, needs to feel like <clears throat> a collaboration uh, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. And I think uh, playing Nick was good for me in, in remembering that because for an extended period of time. But on the other hand, I played Cole Bennett in the Bennett song movie and the Bennett song holiday movie. And that was a whole different thing. Cause he was, he's almost a doormat. He's so nice. So that one was, was the, almost the other way around. 
I had to kind of like kick myself in the butt a little bit after playing him because <laughs> it was so easy to, to just say, okay, go ahead. Uh, and, right. And that's not, again, not, not the greatest thing to do. So yeah, it's, it's good to, to have, but like I said, it, I, I learned so much about myself in seeing what they go through and what they deal with. Um, and then the closer you get to a character, of course, the more dear they, they become to you yeah. and the less you judge them for their flaws. No, oh, yeah. And I was going to ask, I mean, speaking, speaking of yourself, was, was there a, a point in a time <clears throat> as far as in this business and for what you were doing, what you've uh, been working on, where you just said to yourself, this is it. I am on track. This is what I'm going to do for my life. This is, this is the direction that I'm going. Was there a point where it just finally just, it all clicked or did it kind of take well, a little bit to seep in? Well, I, I think so. So I, I've been a, a kind of a hobby actor for most of my life up until six years ago. And, uh, and, and I've been climbing corporate ladders and having the day job and all that jazz. And uh, uh, the, the company I worked for uh, did layoffs. And mm. I remember going to my wife and I said, you know, uh, I, I just got laid off. We have a little bit of money put aside. Um, if I'm ever gonna do this, this is, this, this is now. And, and, and that was the most insecure I've ever been about it. And, uh, and the cool thing is she was like, all right, let's, let's do this. And I said, you know, that means that we have no idea how the hell we're gonna pay our bills. Uh, you know, we're gonna have to figure that out. And it's been ups and downs, but you know what I've found is um, I, don't, I don't have all the riches of, of when I was a, a VP with, uh, with Valleys or, or the y, YMCA. Uh, uh, the materialistic things are slowly but surely coming back, but I'm happier. On the inside of my soul, I'm happy because I, I, I'm doing the stuff I love. <laughs> That's um, fantastic. And, 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 and I have a wife that support me doing what I love. I have kids who look at me. And, and, and I just think in all realms, I have kids that look at me and they see a good father. They see a, a good mother. They see a good partnership. Um, I, I think I'm teaching them all the great things that I ever would have wanted to teach them by doing exactly what I'm doing, which is following my heart. Because right. before I was making good money, but I was, but I was always wishing I was doing something else. And yeah. uh, when, I was, when I was fighting, it was easy because I had an outlet. So, you know, I'd get into cage and, I, and, and I'd get to knock somebody out. And that, that was my outlet. Um, <laughs> and, and you can't keep doing that forever because eventually, no. you know, Age catch is going to catch up with you, and uh, and the <laughs> opponent across the cage is just going to get bigger and scarier and stronger the more you win. So I was like, you know what? I'm undefeated. Um, I'm going I'm to step back from this now. But when when I did that, I had the void because there was no art, there was no nothing right. that I did for me. And and now when I do something for me, I find that I'm I'm able to pull along you know, 25, 50 people behind me that are now chasing their dreams because of what I kind of put into them and the opportunities that I gave them. And, and I love that. There's nothing more that's motivating awesome. than that. That's, uh, that's my number one motivation is to make other people say, you know what, I'm going to do it. Uh, that, that movie, Yes Man, is way more powerful <laughs> Uh, the, it's a dumb comedy, but it's so true. We need to say yes more. Yeah. We need to dare to say <clears throat> yes more. I yeah. think it's, uh, I think there's so much to that. Yeah. I mean, for a lot of people wanting to get into the business, I mean, myself included, I mean, I, I, I'm always leery about or insecure about the idea of trying to get a manager to get me to go out and go out to auditions. But I feel I also have my, obligations to be in the job that I'm in in order to make sure that my bills are paid, which mm -hmm. they are. And <clears throat> that idea of waiting and the uh, burdening my, my job to pursue these dreams is kind mm -hmm. of a tough balance. It is. But, but at the same time, I've been blessed with a lot of great opportunities outside of that. Even yeah. though I wish that 
I would have a few more, but I do not want it to also impact my family so much. Yeah. It's, it's a really tough thing. I mean, what, what it is. For, for people that are going into this, uh, what kind of advice would you give them? Well, I think first things first is you got to love the journey. If you mm-hmm. don't love the journey, um, if you're, if you're, if you're looking at some destination somewhere in this magical <clears throat> distance that, that, that you can't define, then I would say, stick to your day job, do your thing and, and have it as a hobby on the side. But if you love the journey, um, then, then, then opportunities are going to come. Um, sometimes they will come in like, for me, it came as a layoff, which was scary. Um, and, and, and I mean, I had little kids at home and, and they were, they were literally like one <clears> and three and, uh, and we had to kind of make the decision to do this. Um, and it was scary. It was literally really scary, but, but ultimately, you know, money is important. Absolutely. Yeah. The stuff we have is important. Absolutely. But nothing will beat you being happy here and being right. satisfied here uh, and, and being able to to do like we have one shot at this merry-go-round as far as we know mm-hmm. so so why live it for somebody and something other than yourself and your family you you gotta you gotta figure out how do i how do i make this happen how can i fulfill me because if, if you don't pour something into you you can't pour something into your wife and kids Right. So, so, so that's how I look at it. Uh, and, and, and I, I'm blessed. My wife was supportive. She said, let's go and let's see what happens. And like, we, we literally said, if, if we have to stay at your mom and dad's because it goes to hell in a handbasket, then we'll go and get real jobs again, climb the ladders and climb our way out of there. But let's give this everything we got. And now it's six years later and, 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 and I'm still doing this and this is my job. And your films um, are showcasing all over the world. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's wild. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've betrayed seventy-nine countries, distributed by by Vision and Sony. Uh, I, I couldn't be any more fortunate, and that would have never happened unless all the other things happened. Yeah, right. and uh, and uh, I remember, you know, we were we were scared. The first two films, we were falling behind on mortgages a couple times. Oh. And, you know, it was scary, scary. So, uh, but but I, I've read all the stories. You know, you look at The Rock, you look at Sly, you look at Schwarzenegger, uh, all their crazy stories. <clears throat> they all had to risk it all to get it all. Every single yeah. one of them, that yeah. they had to risk it all. And yeah. that's, unfortunately, I think that's what it takes. Uh, uh, when you don't have a plan B, plan A will work. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I personally have plan B and C because yeah. I like being versed in more than one thing. I mean, oh, yeah. I, love, I love the acting. I love working on the independent films, but I've also got experience being tech. Yeah. I mean, I can help be a gaffer or uh, some basic electric and and stuff like that. So that and lighting a little bit of that, too. So I've oh, got yeah. I've got many facets, and I like I, I can love to continue. But to that's learn. all a part of that's all still a part of Plan A. It's all attached to that one goal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know whether you whether it's it's like the directors. A friend of mine um, uh, is a director, and and he he did a couple of commercials. And there are some people that'd be like, "Oh my god, what a sellout!" And it's like, no, 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 no. It's still he's it's just. The journey is not a straight line. No, 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 no. It, 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 it is a serpentine road. And half of the time, you're just hanging on for dear life. Right. Um, so, but I think that's the thing. You just got to commit enough to it to say that, you know, if I have to direct some commercials, if I have to gaffer some stuff, if I have to grip some things, so be it. I'll do it. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Whatever it and takes. That's how I, I mean, that's. I mean, uh, and basically, me. in the end, not allowing yourself to feed into the fear, just, yeah. you know, know exactly yeah. where you stand and stay on, yeah. stay on that track. Like you said, whatever that track may be, as yeah. chaotic and crazy as it may be, 
stay on just just ride it and yeah. learn continue yeah. to oh, learn oh yeah learning is the big thing I, I i can't even tell you how many people that i watch them they make films they're no better than what they were five years ago and i don't mm -hmm. understand that because in today's world like literally every single time we shoot i am all over youtube looking up how do we shoot that uh, scene? It's a Mexican stand-up. It's three people. How do I shoot that? Um, so I look up all these things all the time, all the time. And it's everywhere, right? Constantly researching. Yeah. Yes. I mean, uh, There's for no our... There's no to not know anymore. Right. For our skit, uh, Beth Wolandowski, Act 3. I've got it to where Beth looks like she's got this can of soup punching out of the laptop and then punching uh, me in the face. And it's like, hey, Brody, check this. Check yeah. out how you do how this looks. Yeah. Oh. And then I'm like, can well, that be done? Yeah. Let's look it up. Yeah. Research, research. Boom. And I've yeah. got my favorite guy that that is very, very intuitive in learning and how to do it. Because considering I've only been doing the video editing for about eight months. Yeah. Yeah. And getting better every time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the key. Just always be improving. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got to say, Harley, this has been not only educational, but just in incredible. A, a warm really, and fun, really fun incredible. And yeah, it was a great, great interview. Absolutely. It and felt I've, like we were just hanging out and talking. Absolutely. absolutely. Just hanging out in the Love parlor it. virtually. Right. <laughs> yep. Well, we hope we get a chance to speak to you again at some time. Yeah. You, got, you have our number and email, so... Feel and also, to... and I was, yeah, I was going to say movies, shorts, uh, uh, once uh, Tale of Tales is, is out there circulating, I mean, we'll be more than happy to throw our reviews on it, get it out there oh, for brother. you. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, Tale of Tales will be back on Tubi tomorrow. Okay. Uh, we're getting relaunched, new uh, poster uh, and, and all that jazz. So the new poster should be revealed, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, and, and it's going to be back out again. And Awesome. And again, I don't know all the sites yet, uh, but I know Tubi, Amazon, IMDb TV, Vudu, Redbox, and Roku. I, I, I'm pretty sure all of those. I awesome. don't know if they go live at the same time, but yeah. Especially if, you're, if you, if you want to be a part of a crazy uh, uh, blue-collar strip club with a, a quasi-mobster running it and getting himself in all kinds of trouble... Uh, and then that's definitely the show. Sounds like awesome. my kind of show, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just gonna burn right through that once it once it all just drops. So yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, You're gonna have to let me know how you like it. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much again, Harley. And uh, I'm Brody Barcode. I'm Ryan James. And, and thank you uh, for hanging out with, with us in, in the, the parlor. parlor. And check our interviews out on our podcast via iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Pop Podcast, not Popcast, because that's just weird. <laughs> and there's just a lot more. Brody, Ryan, Harley, I have to get that reverse on the camera. <laughs> thank you again for joining us. If there's anything you need need from us, let us know. We'd be happy Absolutely. to help out. And, and anytime you want to come hang out with us in the parlor. Oh, man, I, I, I would love to because this was a blast. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much again. And right. everybody, you all have a happy one. <laughs>